Hello everyone, this is Jozef Nock here and in this video I would like to show you how you can create a mesh for your open form simulations with CF mesh. I get uh, the requests on YouTube uh, the, to sh create a meshing tutorial and for Snappy Hex Mesh I have my multi-phase simulation project where I show you the basics of Snappy Hex Mesh and now in this video I would like to show you how you can use at least the basic functionalities of CF Mesh. Okay, so I what are we going to do? I wanted to create a, 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 a use the STL file of a, a more complex geometry and for that I decided to go for this dog here and I already recorded this video and also uploaded it to YouTube but then I deleted it because I really thought to myself I really should keep this family friendly so I'm now re-recording this tutorial with this dog here so now where did I get this dog from so I went to Google I typed in dog and STL and then here under this um, link I found this dog STL and I downloaded this downloaded the, the files and then I scaled it because it's not really to scale but that's all I did so I did not create this STL file all the credit goes to this guy Boris 3d studio uh, so this uh, STL file uh, below uh, was created by him. I do not take credit for this. All I did, as I mentioned, I scaled it to have a, this dog a realist, more or less realistic height and size. And I created a floor.stl, which is, of course, the floor. I created an inlet STL, an outlet STL, and I created sides STLs just to have a simulation domain. Okay, so this is uh, the geometry that I am going to use here and I will uh, put uh, the, these STL files into a zip file and provide you this via my, um, my GitHub account and the, the link is, should be below the video in the description of the video. Okay, so we will use these STL files as an input for, for CF mesh. Good, so I just open up here my bash in Windows 10 if you're following along in, in uh, native um, um, in native uh, Ubuntu then just open a terminal. Okay, so as you can see uh, this uh, geometry is in my documents in YouTube and CF mesh so I just go I use my symbolic link to my documents and then YouTube and CF mesh and now I just create a directory for meshing and what do we do here uh, okay so you ne never set up the dictionaries from scratch you take something that already ran and you modify it so this is why I'm just going to copy the files of an existing tutorial of CF mesh which comes with open form and I just modify it so I will just copy this from my open form and I'm using version 1912 it's in modules CF mesh and tutorials Cartesian mesh and I just copy the elbow 90 degrees a tutorial here and um, maybe before I um, start uh, start taking a look at the files there is a user guide for for um, CF mesh a PDF and if I j if I just copy it here maybe it should not be in mesh but maybe one uh, one level above okay so there is a PDF and I advise you guys to go through this PDF because th it is not a very long PDF but just go through the possibilities of CF mesh you can create a, um, a, 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 a for the input you ne need surface meshes for example STLs but you can create a Cartesian mesh a 2d Cartesian mesh tetrahedral mesh and also polyhedral meshes I will con concentrate today on the Cartesian mesh 
but try out the other possibilities here. So as I mentioned, you uh, we, we need a surface uh, mesh, so STL files or uh, a, 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 a better format called FMS file. And I'm going to show you, so this here you can read about the FMS file and I'm going to show you how you can convert STL to FMS. Okay, but just go through these slides uh, or these pages here, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to only show you the the basic settings here, and the detailed settings are going to be in this PDF. Okay, so then I copied here the the files that fr from the elbow um, tutorial. I'm just going to delete the all run scripts. I'm not a big fan of all run scripts, and I'm also going to delete the STL file. Um, yes, and then well, what do we need here? I'm just going to open up in mesh in system the dictionary for CF mesh is this mesh dict file, and the other three files are dummy files here. So I just open it up in a text editor, and now you can see how easy the dictionary for CF mesh is, how simple it is compared to a snappy hex mesh because that can be a bit overwhelming. And I'm just going to reduce this down to maybe the three most important entries here. So at first we will not add layers here. And I'm also not going to talk about local refinement. I'm just going to talk about the first four settings. So this, this is really the basic a dictionary that you require for CF mesh. Okay, let me just add the rest. I just uncommented them. And here you can see now a minimum cell size, a maximum cell size and boundary cell size. And this is very similar to what you would ha use uh, for a snappy hex mesh during the stage where you set up the block mesh, the initial block mesh. Okay, but first we have to define a surface file. And for that, so one surface file, and this is now important that in this case, we will not specify five different STL files, but rather we will combine them into one combined STL file. And you can do that in the terminal by going into the geometry and with the command cat and then dog. It has, so cat doesn't have, uh, is not related to the dog, it's the command cat <laughs> from uh, from Linux floor and then inlet STL, outlet STL and sides and I'm just going to pipe that into combined.stl. Okay, now if I open up this combined.stl, what's this? Hmm? Will my ParaView now crash? Let's see. No, it doesn't crash. Very good. Okay, so let me just hide all the other STL files. So this is one STL file which contains all the STL files and now here you can see STL labeling. So now we have different sections of the STL file. And if I just open up this combine.stl which is an ASCII file, uh, there now you can uh, we can see uh, what this looks like. So this is a list of triangles starting with solid dog. This is where our dog STL file started. And now this is a long list of, uh, of triangles. If I go to the very bottom, then at the bottom it ends with end side. So this is the last STL file. And since the sides STL um, consisted of, let me just check, and one, two, three, four, five, six triangles, then we should see here one, two, three, four, five, six triangles. And then here is our sides.stl. So these are the, the triangles for the sides. And then as you can see here at the top, then um, the outlet uh, STL is defined. So over there we only have uh, two triangles. And then we have the inlet. And then before the inlet, we have the floor. And then before the floor, we have the dog. So this is how uh, this STL is being uh, set up that you have solid and dog and then a list of triangles. And then it says and solid dog. And then it starts with solid floor. Then you have a list of uh, triangles and it says and solid floor. And 
with this you can use one STL file to define your whole geometry. But I used this approach with the command cat. With this command cat, because many uh, CAD tools can only um, export individual STL files. Some can do uh, export this automatically, this combined STL file. So if your CAD2 can do that, then good for you. you don't, then you don't have to save them one by one. But if your CAD2 cannot save the STL files one by one, then this is how you can easily combine them. And now I just, going, I just copy this combined STL into my mesh folder. And now I have here my system and this combined STL. But I already mentioned that a better input rather than STL is FMS. And you can read uh, about the FMS input here in the PDF. And then um, and how you can convert the, the STL file to an FMS file is uh, with the command surface feature edges. For Snappy X Mesh you use surface feature extract. Now it's a bit different surface feature edges and then you type in combined STL and then combined FMS and then you press enter. And now we have a combined.fms file. And if I just open up this combined.fms file, this is, yeah, so it has a different format. Um, and uh, why I really like it is because it is open form specific. So already here at the beginning, you have uh, your five boundaries, which will be used as boundary conditions later on. So at this stage, you can already redefine the names of the boundaries. And also here you have the types. So here it says empty. I don't know why empty is the default boundary type, but for example, the, the dog is going to be a, a wall. The floor is also going to be a wall. And the inlet is a patch. The outlet is also a patch and then your size depending on whether you have a, want to simulate a wind tunnel or just an open area then this is either a patch or I'm just going to use walls or wind tunnel here. Okay so combined FMS is our surface file. So I'm just typing in combine.fms here and then uh, then let's talk about the mean cell size here and the max cell size and this uh, these entries here. Okay, so how big is this dog? So the dog it has a height of two meters. So this is a huge dog, and um, the the sides. So the entire domain is has a height of four meters. So it's so the dog is approximately half of the domain. Yes, you can go ahead and reduce the size of this dog to a normal dog size. This is a very, very big dog, but um, okay, L let's use these values. Okay, so the, the, the height is two meters. And uh, this would mean that you would have a cell length size of one meters to five meters. So the mesh would be very, very coarse. So it is a better idea to reduce this maybe by a factor of 10. So 0 0.1 and then the maximum cell size is 0 0.5 and then the boundaries, maybe let's restrict it to 0 0.3 just to stay with, with, these, with these ratios here and now we can just start the meshing here, okay? So to start a CF mesh, you type in Cart Cartesian mesh and then press enter. And if you're running uh, um, open from version six or seven, so the foundation version, this is not automatically included in that version, then you have to compile it yourself with the openform.com version, with version 18, 12, 19, 12, and so on. A Cartesian uh, CF mesh is included out of the box as a module. Okay, so let's just wait until the meshing finishes here. So maybe what is very interesting with CF mesh, if I open up here another um, bash here, then you can see that the CPU percentage is at 1200%. 
Oh, so it's on th uh, 12 threads and this shows that Cartesian mesh runs on uh, on multiple threads automatically so but with hyper threading so it is not like the uh, normal um, parallel um, usage of in open form with MPI run but it automatically uses mu multiple CPUs so this is this is a really cool uh, feature of snappy of CF mesh Okay, so yeah, so the, the, the mesh is coarse, so it has problems with um, bad faces and inverted faces. So in this case, the meshing will be a bit slower, but let's wait until we have something. Okay, and then in maybe let's go through what I want to show here so I will now reduce these cell size in the second step then I'm going to show you local refinement by adding here the dog as a surface to have an additional refinement along the dog STL file and then in the end I'm going to add layers maybe three layers and then we have to adjust the thickness according to the dog here but let's wait for this to finish, it takes longer than expected because of the coarseness of the mesh. Okay, then guys, I will just stop recording at this point and come back when the, the meshing finishes. Okay, so welcome back. And what do you see here? So for example, this clock time says that uh, the meshing took 239 seconds. And then this execution time, this gives you how much time it would have needed on one single core. So this hyper threading of CF mesh is really, really cool. Okay, then let's just open up the mesh. Ah, okay, so we don't have a .foam file. So let's just create a .foam file, open .foam dot foam ending then we'll tell Paraview to open up a par uh, an open foam case okay so what do we have here so let me just hide the STL files and then let's see the surface mesh okay so this is not a surface mesh in in the edges it has for what for whatever reason uh, re refine the mesh here in the, in the corners and okay now we have uh, the dog and because the mesh was so coarse then it tried to refine it by itself we're given by an algorithm so this is why I personally don't really like very very coarse starting mesh and also uh, non-uniform values for mean cell size and maximum cell size available the same is for for me in snappy hex mesh with the levels the refinement levels but this is a question of personal taste so let's just take a look at the mesh okay x normal mesh here around the dog so this looks okay, but the, the, you see that the problem here. So this is the maximum cell size and the, this is too big. So I would like to now test a uniform cell size of 0 0.1 and see what happens if I just start, uh, rerun the meshing with this setting. So I, we don't have to delete here other things. We just have to rerun Cartesian mesh. Okay, let's see whether this takes longer or not. If this takes longer than a minute, then I'm just going to skip ahead to the point when the meshing finished. But let's hope that this is faster. And But already at this stage, you can see that CF mesh can create a rather good quality surface mesh. So in some cases, Snappy Hex Mesh might be better. In some cases, CF Mesh might be better. And as you can see, CF Mesh is very fast. Ah, okay, we finished within 24 seconds. So it is. It really makes sense to sometime if you if you have used uh, Snappy Hex Mesh to give CF Mesh a try, invest one or two hours for your geometry and see whether you get a better mesh resolution or not. And if not, then just stick with Snappy. If yes, then just uh, use CF Mesh. And now you see. Now we have a coarser surface mesh, but this is because we had a finer initial mesh. And then this algorithm didn't try to, um, uh, to refine the surface of the dog. So this is a rough dog, as you can see here. So now we really should 
uh, refine the mesh close to the dog and this is can be done with the local refinement and with the, uh, uh, the dog boundary okay and now we are not going to use 0 0.2 maybe zero maybe twice the refinement level here so not 0 0.05 but 0 0.25 and then let's see what happens if we now refine the mesh by this factor here okay so mesh quality is not the best yet but we are tr give, uh, trying hopefully with this ah now it even took only 19 seconds so uh, cf mesh is really really fast let me just refresh and zoom out and now you can see that we have a decent surface mesh here for the dog if i compare this to the stl file yeah we don't have all the creases here of the fur of the dog but oh well for a rough tutorial i mean you can further decrease this by one factor of one additional level of 0 0.125 or even further or just stick with that and try it out just go nuts with the possibilities here in in um, in CF mesh and you can read all about these refinement possibilities here and you can also add uh, not just local refinements of patches but also object refinements you can add boxes you can add cones hollow cones lines and then refine inside of those and uh, yes so there are also some uh, um, advanced settings here and the last thing i want to concentrate now is boundary layers so as you can see here in the pdf you can either define a boundary layer for your entire domain or you can define it for individual patch uh, patches so we could define it only for the, the the dog or we can define layers for the entire domain and this is what was being done here with the elbow uh, tutorial so let's just use these settings here and then you can change this accordingly to have only the layers on the dog here okay so let's just go back to here so i'm just going to add three here and thickness ratio yeah 1.1 is okay but the, so the maximum layer thickness this is the last layer this really should be smaller than uh the the refinement along the dog so maybe let's just go for 0 0.00005 here so it's 20 percent of the last cell size so i'm just going to save this and remesh with cartesian mesh and then let's see what the mesh looks like so uh, the surface mesh will not be a lot different because it's just adding layers here to the mesh but then with the cross section the mesh will be a bit different so maybe let's just stick with this view here of the dock here sitting and let's see what happens if I set here a value of Y5? Okay, okay, maybe it somehow didn't change it. I wanted to add three layers, but let's go for five. Why not? Okay, so we have now 23 seconds of runtime. If I just refresh now, now we have five layers, and <laughs> this is really a lot. So let's just try and type in three here shouldn't be that difficult for a text editor okay and then rerun now this and then let's see what happens if i type in three so you can see one two three four and five layers being added here so yeah that's a lot of layers here we don't need so many layers and you can see that because we defined it for as a general setting now we also have layers on the floor and also the inlet and the sides you don't need that so you can modify that according to the syntax which is given here so you just add patch boundary layers and then the name of the patch so dog or maybe even floor as well okay so we took 25 seconds for this, uh, the meshing to run and now if i zoom in and out now we have 
three layers, whereas the third layer is not the best, but oh well, this is what layer addition looks like in CF mesh. And as I mentioned, the surface mesh does not change considerably. So this is what I wanted to show you in this tutorial, the basic settings for CF mesh for the, this mean cell size, which then defines the, the basic uh, the, the resolution in, in, in the entire geometry. This is, this is com something compared to block mesh with sna for, for snappy hex mesh. And then you can use local refinement close to your boundaries. And also you can define boxes, cones, uh, and spheres and so on. Uh, and inside those geometric features, you can refine the mesh additionally, and you can add boundary layers. And of course, there are a couple of additional advanced settings and this is why I drew, drew your attention to the user guide and it is a short user guide of 26 pages so it really makes sense to take a look at it. And guys, just go nuts with this tutorial, test different uh, refinement levels on the dog and also uh, set up a case, uh, run simple foam or pimple foam or what, whichever foam you want to run, the, the calculate the flow around the dog, the pressure uh, on the surface of the dog and the, the CD value maybe of the dog or you can use interfoam and dump water on this poor dog if you want it or just uh, add a fan in front of the dog and then blow air in the face of the dog. Go nuts! I would love to see some simulation results posted on LinkedIn or just send it to me via, uh, with via email and I, I'd love to see some results with this dog. <laughs> I hope that you like this video and that you learned something. I would like to thank you for watching and listening and I hope to see you next time.